Hi, my name is Avidia. This is my cat, Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I'm excited to teach you and give you some tips on how to play The Lord of the Rings Duel for Middle Earth, designed by Antoine Boza and Bruder Cathala and published by Repo Production, the same team behind the brilliant Seven Wonders Duel. The illustrations of Vincent Dutré are beautiful and enhance the experience of this legendary theme. They also do justice to a game that's not just a reskin of Seven Wonders Duel, but a really smart way to weave the story of the Lord of the Rings into the mechanism while taking a new twist on the previous game. I think the designers are very much like a good wine where they just get better and better with time. So if you're looking for a competitive two-player game that's easy to learn but has a lot of depth, Look no further. In the Lord of the Rings Duel for Middle Earth, you play either the side of the Fellowship or the Dark Forces of Sauron. You compete to achieve one of the three winning conditions by collecting the cards you need, but also trying to stop the other player from getting those he or she might need. Quite a few of the elements are similar to Seven Wonders Duel, but in this video I'm going to assume you've never played it. Over the course of three chapters, you compete to pick the cards that will strengthen your skills, build your treasure, expand your positions across Middle-earth, rally its races and advance the race for the ring. There are three ways to win the game and none of them involve points. The first is the quest of the ring. Here, you win if you get Frodo and Sam to bring the ring to Mount Doom or if your Nazgul catch the ring. The second is conquering Middle-earth. In this case, you win as soon as you have at least one piece in all seven regions of Middle-earth. The third is to rally support from the different races of Middle-earth. You win as soon as you have collected six unique symbols. To set up the game, start by placing the central board representing Middle-earth between the two players. Separate the 18 alliance tokens into six piles of three, shuffle each pile and place it face down in its dedicated notch. Shuffle the seven landmark tiles, draw three randomly and place them face up near the board. Keep the others face down next to them. Separate the chapter cards into three decks as per the runes and numbers on the back. Shuffle each deck and keep them face down nearby. Assemble the quest of the ring track like this. Frodo and Sam start here and the Nazgul there. Now, either pick or randomly draw the side you want to play. Each player takes the 15 units and seven fortress pawns of its color. On the board, the Fellowship player places two units on Arnor and Sauron two units on Mordor. Give two coins to Sauron and three to the Fellowship. Keep the reserve nearby. Finally, place the help sheet nearby for easy access. It explains all the races as well as the landmarks and the quest of the ring effects. But first I should tell you more about all these cards. First of all, if you can't read the runes, you can see the number for each chapter here. All cards have a main colour, grey, yellow, blue, green, red and purple. Some can be played directly without costing anything, but the majority of cards require you to pay a coin or have one or more skills to play them. To acquire new skills, start by getting some of the grey cards. They provide the skills you need to get better cards such as Ruse, Strength, Courage, Knowledge and Leadership. In chapter one, they only provide one of each, but in chapter two, you can get multiple skills, either two at a time or separated by a slash, so you get to pick one of them per turn. You keep these skills until the end of the game, but you don't have great cards in chapter three, so you need to get them early on in the game. The other cards that help you get more cards are the yellow cards. You collect coins from the supply as soon as you play them. Two coins in chapter one, three or four in chapter two and five in chapter three. Yellow cards in chapter one and two are free. Also, there's an icon on the three coin card in chapter two. This is linked to that same icon on this five coin card on chapter three. It means that if you have this card in play, you can place this one for free, even if you don't have the required ruse or courage. Coins are important as they allow you to replace skills you're missing. The cards you get with the skills and the money from the grey and yellow cards are the cards you need to win the game. I'll start with the green cards, which each represent a race. In chapter one and two, you can collect the elves, hobbits, humans, and dwarves. In chapter three, you can only collect ents and wizards. All the races of chapter one link to their counterparts in chapter two, but the hobbits and the human 
in chapter two also link to the races of chapter three. Collect all six races and you win the game. Now I'll show you how you can win the race for the ring using the blue cards. There are blue cards throughout all three chapters. Each time you play one of them, you move your character one, two or three rings forward. Fredo and Sam if you play the Fellowship, the Nazgul if you play Sauron. Here also some cards linked from chapter one to two and two to three. And this one from one to three. Now let's see how you can win the third mission using the red cards which you use to place units on the map. As you play the card, immediately place one, two or three units on one of the two regions shown on the card. So here it would be two units on either Rohan or Mordor. You have to pick one, you cannot split the units. Again, some of them link from chapter one to two and even three. I'll now explain the purple cards which you can only play in chapter three and which impact the central map and could remove coins from your enemy. This symbol shows you remove one coin from your enemy's reserve. For each arrow, move one unit to an adjacent region and this allows you to remove one or two enemy units from any region. Now we can start playing. At the beginning of each chapter, shuffle the corresponding deck and place the 20 cards of that chapter on the table following its diagram. On page three of the rules and on the inside box, you can see how to prepare the cards for each chapter. Start from the top left card and remember that light cards are face up and dark ones are face down. Discard the three cards you have left face down in the discard pile. The player who plays Sauron always starts first. All three chapters play in the same way with each player taking one of three actions per turn. You can pick a card and play it in front of you or pick a card to sell it and discard it or pick a landmark and play it in front of you. I'll start by explaining how you pick a card to play. Choose a card that's not partially covered by another card. If there's no symbol, the card is free and you can put it immediately in front of you face up. If there's a coin here, you must pay its value before taking the card. Pay it to the supply. If there's one or more symbols, check if you already have these skill symbols in your play area. You can use each skill symbol you have only once per turn. For each skill symbol you're missing, pay one coin. If a face down card is now unblocked, flip it face up immediately. If you don't have the symbols or the coins, you cannot play the card into your play area unless there's a matching icon on it. This card has a chaining symbol here. If you have the same symbol in your play area, you can take the card for free. Stack your cards by color type this way so you can always see their effect. If you've played a blue card, you can progress on the quest of the ring mission. Move the ring bearers or the Nazgul one, two or three steps along the quest of the ring track. One step for each ring on the card. If you reach or pass one of the bonuses, immediately collect it. One coin, place one unit in one region, take one more turn after this one, remove one enemy fortress from any region. If the Nazgul reach the ring, Sauron wins. And if the Hobbits reach Mount Doom, the Fellowship wins. Either way, the game ends immediately. If you've played a red card, you can progress on the conquest of the Middle Earth mission. Place one, two or three units on one of the two regions indicated on the card. If no enemy unit is present, nothing happens. If you place units where there are enemy units, remove them one for one. So if you place three units in Gondor, and Sauron has one unit there, you remove one unit each and you leave the two units from the fellowship. If at this stage you have units or fortresses in all seven regions of Middle Earth, you win immediately. If you've played a green card, you can progress on the support of the races of Middle Earth mission. As soon as you have two matching symbols, draw the top two alliance tokens of this race, reveal them, pick one you place face up in your play area and return the other face down on top of the shield stack. Whenever you have three different symbols and only once per game, reveal the top one of those three races, pick one to put face up in your play area and return the other two face down on their stack. Here it might pay to wait until chapter three as the powers from the Ents and the Wizards are more powerful than those from the races you get in chapters one and two. Now I'll show you the second possible action, how you sell a card. Take any uncovered card and discard it face down. In chapter one, collect one coin two in chapter two and three if you sell a card in chapter three. Now, the third possible action is to take a landmark tile. Pick one of those available in this chapter. If there's still some available, you pay the cost of the landmark just like a card. 
and also pay one coin per fortress you already have on the map. Immediately place one of your fortress pawns on the corresponding region. Note that fortresses do not trigger conflicts like units do, so this way you can have both players present in the same region. Also resolve the other effects immediately. Check the player aid for a detailed description of the seven landmark effects. If there's no landmark available, you cannot take any more landmarks in this chapter. Now, once all the cards for the chapter are played, set up the next chapter. Replenish the landmarks up to three. Then place the 20 cards of that chapter on the table following its diagram, like this for chapter two and like this for chapter three. The player who played last does not start the next chapter. As soon as a player has reached one of the three winning conditions, the game ends immediately. Otherwise, the game ends at the end of chapter three and the player who is present in the most regions of Middle Earth wins the game. If there's still a tie, you share the victory. Now, my tips to win at the Lord of the Rings Duel for Middle Earth are, you need skills to be able to get the cards you need to win the game. So make sure to get them in chapters one and two. Money is also crucial in this game and deciding when you start spending is critical as it can have massive consequences. Picking up a landmark can impact who will start the next chapter. Keeping this in mind when planning chapter three can be a very good play. The races you get in the first two chapters have long-term benefits, while those you get in chapter three are really powerful. Playing them properly can be hard to stop. Cumulative effects of cards and landmarks or allies can be very powerful and you will need to be focused to complete a mission. And that's how you play the Lord of the Rings Duel for Middle Earth. I absolutely love this game, not just because it's a great design, but because like for so many, the Lord of the Rings has been a part of my life for so long. My brother even gave me a Folio Society edition with incredible illustrations, which are these here. They're such a treasure. This game weaves the same magic from the books right into the gameplay and chapter three in particular feels so climactic. It's like stepping right into Middle Earth. It's definitely become my favorite to play game. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you're interested in learning more board games, consider subscribing and clicking the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It's a great way to stay updated on the games I teach and it helps support the channel. Thank you. I started making videos back in 2020 and it's been an amazing experience learning so many skills to make this channel possible. It's grown beyond my expectations but now I want to grow it even more. And for that, I need your help. I have a patron page that allows your support on a monthly basis and to buy me a coffee where you can support me as a one-off. The links are in the video description. If you're able and willing to contribute, I'd be really grateful. If there's a game you would like me to teach, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely check it out. We will make more games easy soon. Bye now.